Hello and welcome to this blog on learning a musical instrument. Primarily we've been talking about the acoustic guitar. This is the fifth posting and and this video is on the subject of practice. So I'm assuming at this point that you have yourself a good teacher or you've enrolled in a reputable online course. If you need to, you can check out my previous posts uh, to learn how to go about finding a teacher and getting some good instruction going. But in this video, I'm going to talk specifically about practice. So what do we mean by practice? It's kind of obvious, isn't it? But practice is what musicians call the time we spend alone learning our instrument and expanding what we know and what we can do. And it's where we maintain what we already know. Because with uh, playing a musical instrument, like any skill, it's sort of a use it or lose it. You've got to keep going back and making sure that everything you've learned in the past is still with you. Also, if you're a beginner or you're taking uh, lessons, you need practice to support the time you spend with your teacher or the time that you spend watching material on your online course. Because having learned what to do in your lesson, practice is where you make it your own. In addition to stabilizing what uh, you learn if you're taking lessons, even accomplished musicians devote practice time to learning new techniques and songs, and also they'll spend time during practice maintaining their skills um, and so forth. So it might be counterintuitive if you think of um, music as a kind of an art, an art form, uh, where you're kind of expressing something uh, it's an expressive art. Then why do we have to do something as mechanical as practicing? Well, music is the art. The art of music is built upon the science of practice. What do I mean by that? Well, let me give you another way to think about it. We'll look at another kind of art. If you've ever been to the ballet, You've seen the grace and the beauty of dancers. They seem to float effortlessly across the stage. But the beauty and the artfulness that you see in a dance performance requires that each of those dancers has undergone arduous training, daily practice, and rehearsal. It's the daily training that's the science that results in the art of the dance. For musicians, of course, our art is the music that we make, and it's practice that enables our art. So we just have to do it. We have to practice. Uh, if you've been taking lessons, for example, and you're not practicing what you've been shown, then you're not going to be able to get better. Because again, just knowing what to do isn't enough. You actually have to do it. And secondly, if you're, even if you're practicing every day, if you're not practicing effectively or efficiently, then you may not make progress either. Some people will sit down and play the things they already know and call it practice, but they in fact are not going to be getting better anytime soon. So let's look at some specifics. With very few ex exceptions, all musicians, no matter how accomplished they are, practice. So if you want to be a musician, then you have to practice in the same way that they do. Learning an instrument requires something of a time commitment uh, to make noticeable progress. And of course, the time that you're committing is the time that you spend taking your lessons or taking your course, and also the time you spend practicing. In terms of practicing, if you're a beginner, you probably need to think about spending maybe 20 minutes several times a week in order to make any kind of noticeable progress as you go forward. And then as you learn more, then you'll naturally be increasing the amount of time that you practice more. So there are certain things you want to do in order to establish your practice habit. First, establish a place and a regular time to practice. I mean, it sounds very mundane to say it, but it's very important. And tell the people around you, your family and, or your roommates, that you're going to be practicing and you need some time to be undisturbed when you do. Also, set some goals for yourself. Have a daily goal for how long you intend to practice. 
and also have a goal for how many times a week you intend to practice and try to stick to it. Uh, every day is the best goal for how often you practice, but it's hard for some people to do that and certainly understood. But set a goal for yourself and then when you do practice, use a clock or your watch and time your practice and try to keep to your goal that you've set and be honest with yourself. Also, consider keeping a practice journal of some kind. It can be very simple where you can just write down how long you practiced each day, write down kind of what you've been working on, what you might consider your achievements are, you know, I've learned exercise three kind of thing. Um, and also write down what you find challenging and so you can refer to that uh, at, time, at the next time you practice and get right to work on that. Now, as you uh, have been playing a while and practicing a while, if you're getting to the point where you're playing songs or exercises, it's great to have some way to record yourself so that you can then play back what you did, listen or watch what you've done if it's a video, and then you can see and make adjustments to what you're playing and try to get it better and then record it again and so forth. That can just be a part of your practice. So that's always a great idea. When you're getting ready to practice, also make sure whatever tools that you might need during your practice are readily available to you. Maybe your teacher has recommended for particular things that you should use a metronome. So you want to have that there. If you need a tuner, of course, if you're playing guitar, you will. Uh, sometimes you might be practicing to backing tracks. So you want to have them available some way to play them where you can hear them and so forth. Maybe you've got some notation or chord charts or something like that. Have that stuff available. And then just do it. That's the most important thing. Now, when you're going to practice, when you look at the actual allocation of time while you're practicing, you want to be efficient about it. And the main thing you want to avoid doing is just sitting down and playing what you already know. Um, there's a time for that, but what you might want to think about doing is dividing your time up, say start with a little bit of a warm-up, doesn't have to be long, it could be uh, just a few minutes, uh, maybe think of it as 5-10% of the total amount of time that you're going to be practicing, and you can do something very simple, maybe just some simple chromatics, um, even people who've been playing a long time often will just do something like this. You haven't touched your instrument in 24 hours it might be a little stiff you're not going for speed or music or anything you're just warming up you can think of it as like before you go jogging you're doing a little stretching this is my stretching it's not real musical but it feels good to do something like this So if I do that on each of the six strings, um, that can be very effective. And if you're learning some chords, another way to warm up is to just play your chords. Just form them and strum them once. You're not really making music, but you are moving your hand moving your fingers, getting warmed up. And you do that because if you've warmed up, then the next part of your practice will be a lot more efficient. If you haven't warmed up, then what'll happen is when you move into doing something um, uh, like an exercise or so forth, the first part of that is gonna be warming up anyway. So it's really good to get your warm-ups done first. And then the next thing you wanna do is spend some time stabilizing what you've recently learned. If you just finished learning a song, play that song, work on it, make it sound good. Um, if you've been working on an exercise and you think that you got it down, play that exercise. In other words, whatever you've learned most recently, you wanna go over that because you wanna stabilize what you have. You'll find that if you don't do that, then it's very quickly the things that you thought you had down won't be quite there for you. So devote some time to stabilizing your most recent um, exercises and songs and maybe spend a quarter of your time of, the, of your allocated practice time doing that kind of thing. So you've warmed up and 
now you've stabilized what you've learned recently and you still have the majority of your practice time left. So the next thing, the third thing that you wanna do is think about advancing. This is where you're gonna spend maybe half of your lesson doing. You're gonna get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Maybe you've taken a recent lesson and you've been shown something new. This is when you wanna go work on that. I mean, you formed up, you've gone over recent material, now you're gonna get out there and do something new. It might be a little harder. So we call this, you know, getting out of your comfort zone a bit. But this is where you push yourself. This is where you try to learn something new and get better. So you wanna do that uh, for some amount of time, maybe half of your total allocated practice time, something like that. And then whatever time is left after you've worked on new material for a while, that's the time you wanna sit down and enjoy playing what you already know, noodling, being creative, being musical, uh, being playful, whatever you find in enjoy enjoyment from doing, that's when you wanna do it at the end. So it's like the reward for all of your hard work. So that's a great way to think about dividing up your practice time. It's just uh, a suggestion. The percentages aren't uh, necessary, really. You can, uh, you can do whatever you feel comfortable with, but start with a warm up. Move right into your uh, stabilization part where you go over what you've recently learned. Then there's the get out of your comfort zone section of your practice. That's the, really the meat of your practice where you're trying to um, get out of the comfort zone and make forward progress. And then finally, reward yourself at the end with playing whatever you find enjoyable, creative, playful. That's when you do it. It's one, uh, I just want you to avoid the trap of playing, spending your whole practice time playing what you already know. It's kind of fun. And I do it myself sometimes. And I've learned now that I have to be a little bit more disciplined if I want to get better. Now, I mentioned that some people find the idea of practice to be, you know, it sounds maybe um, like schoolwork or something. Uh, and I'll tell you that one of my inspirations uh, in terms of learning how to play guitar was the great jazz guitarist Chuck Lowe. And he once told me that when he was practicing, that at some point in his practice, he would start up, he'd do his warm ups, and he would start doing all of his work. But he would say at some point during his practice, he found himself achieving kind of a Zen state of mind, he called it. He said it was as if he were meditating. Uh, and so for him, practice became kind of a spiritual experience. And that's really something to think about. When he told me that, it totally changed how I viewed practice. He told me that his practice time was one of the best parts of his day. So think about that. So... Two things to come out of this are, first, when it comes to practice, just do it. It's not enough to um, take lessons and watch your teacher show you things. You actually need to get it into your own uh, hands and fingers and your own inner being. So you've got to take that time to just do it. And secondly, when you do practice, since you've allocated the time to do it, make sure you're doing it in the most efficient way that you possibly can.